Some people predict that ChatGPT is going to replace millions of jobs out there. This sounds very exciting and also very scary. And they said that they can replace programmer, lawyer, and customer success jobs. In this video, I'm going to give a test run and see if really can remove product management, programmer, and people management jobs. Stay until the end of the video where I discuss most the 99% of people have missed, which is a strategy thinking by ChatGPT. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director product and featured in Forbes. I've helped 100 people land their dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startups and continue to get promoted as a product leader. If you're interested in product management course, please go to pmaccelerator.io to learn more. If you like and the free education we provide today, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so be notified every time we post a new video every Wednesday. As a director product and working for several Fortune 500 companies, I've launched several AI and cloud and edge computing product in the past. Today, I'm going to use my real life product example and see if ChatGPT can actually reproduce the product I've launched in the past and use that example to see if it can actually replace our jobs. First of all, what is ChatGPT? It is a language model provided by OpenAI, which can interact with you guys through conversational way and it's actually free for anyone to use and actually like yesterday I heard that ChatGPT and OpenAI actually spent millions of dollars to run ChatGPT because there's so many users every single day actually free to use in, and you can go to the description of this video to get a free link. First of all, let's see if ChatGPT can actually replace the software developers and designer in the product management space. Actually, I tried this out into my ChatGPT account. For example, here is how I log in. So this is my login interface. You can directly go into any chat and actually I already have my several chat history when I do experiment. First of all, let's check out the developer phase. If you can actually do development and also design work. And I put in this and test which is asking ChatGPT to create HTML code to design my living room with the most modern design style. And they actually wrote a full HTML copy and slowly going through each individual like description of my living room and ceilings and floor and furniture, everything. Um, guess what? And once you have this code, you can run it on top of another AI engine to turn it into a design. Now, because myself, actually, I don't know how to code, hey guys. So I went to a separate a developer and he was able to run the code generated by ChatGPT on top of it, another AI to generate a very beautiful design. We can take a look at here. It's crazy. Another person said, can you come up with fantastical decoration ideas for my living room? And then he took those ideas and used mid-journey to generate images. Here are the results. Honestly, I can't breathe. Look at this. Then the same guy asked for characters of a horror movie and again used the results to generate images on Midjourney. This is amazing. So basically, if you're able to run simple code on top of another AI engine to run graphic design, you're able to generate very beautiful outcome. Of course, this is mainly for entry-level programmer work. If you want to do very comprehensive programming development, and I believe we really need advanced developers. But so far, this is like groundbreaking. I was actually speechless. It's able to get people access to development and also design without knowing how to code. This is amazing. So for writing code, I'm going to give it like 80 out of 100 score. Now let's look into the people manage part of product manager. The number one task of product manager is being able to write requirement. So I asked ChatGPT this generic question, how to write product requirements and actually give me really good answers. For example, it gave me six steps regarding how to write requirements and they are pretty good. For example, identify the needs of your audience, identify the goals, objective of the product, list the functional, non-functional requirement, prioritize requirement, and all the six steps are actually pretty good. This is also similar content we teach people inside the product manager accelerator. So actually I like the high level concept they provide, but I try to dive deeper because I really want to see if we're able to write requirement for a specific product so you can actually replace our jobs and we just hit a buttons and spin out all the requirement for us. 
So ask this question. So ChatGPT, please write product requirement for AWS EC2. So for the cloud product, EC2 is basic. All the developer out there knows EC2. So it's a very easy task to see if ChatGPT actually understands what's ins and outs of AWS and how to actually write technical requirement for AWS. And here is what it gave me. So it actually gave me 10 different kind of functional requirements for AWS and some of those are scalability requirements. For example, some of those are pretty good. Uh, as a product, AWS EC2 must be run in a variety of operating systems. I think it's pretty generic. Um, for example, must be provide a range of instance type and sizes. And usually as a product manager, we not only say you provide different sizes, we need to be specific being able to provide the size as small as nano container up to how many gigabytes. So in general, I think I'm going to give a score of writing requirements at like five out of 10 because it's actually missing lots of requirements. And right now they only focus on the high level functional requirements. And in reality, as a product manager, we need to know how to write five different types of requirements. In the video right here, top of five different requirements, they are like usability, functional, performance requirements, and integration requirement, different kind of requirements. And right here, they only talk about functionality, uh, but without other requirements, you're not able to build outstanding products. So therefore it's kind of five out of 10 depend on score of capabilities of writing requirements. The next part of the job is actually being able to design system architecture diagram by working with engineering team. So this is a very challenging technical function of a technical product manager because you need to understand the technical aspect and also understand the business aspect of a product. In this case, I use my real life example of the AI Smart Cities product I built in the past, which also launched in the past, has received Mayor's Best Practice Award. And I did side-by-side -side comparison to see if they can actually design the architecture for me. And guess what they got? And I asked, design system architecture diagram of a smart cities product to help cities reduce car crashes. And actually gave me very good components actually goes into our system architecture diagram. I was expecting a real diagram, but somehow it's all conversational as we know. And so it's not graphic, but talks about different sensors, data storage, data analytics, and decision-making. This is great actually. User interface, integration with other systems is actually pretty good. Um, if you do side-by-side -side comparison right here and also the product I launched in the past, it's a screenshot right here. Actually lots of sensors they talked about is actually being used by my product which have been uh, used and launched by different cities. So actually this like uh, prediction of key component goes into architecture diagram. I would say it's like seven out of 10, um, of course, the details, the join part is missing. I believe that's where the ChatGPT needs to improve. So comment below, do you think ChatGPT can actually replace product management job? And what kind of questions would you ask ChatGPT to do for you as a product manager? Comment below, I'd love to hear. The next part of skills I need test for ChatGPT is communication skills. Because as a product manager, frequently every day, we're in meetings, communicating with stakeholders, and actually it's one of the biggest part of being a product manager. So I asked ChatGPT this question, how would I tell my stakeholders that product launch is delayed? And he gave me a very specific like methodology, which is actually pretty good, but I want to take it easy and also do less work. I was like, oh, what about you write an email for me to tell my stakeholder in email saying that the project is delayed, what would you say in the email? It's actually very conversational with very good language built in. See this, pretty good. It's ask subject, product launch delay. And dear stakeholders, I'm writing to inform you that the product launch original schedule for the original date has been delayed. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause and appreciate your understanding. The reason for this delay is, plug in the reason. We are committed to delivering a top quality product and appreciate your continued partnership. This is amazing. Hey guys, so basically this email is talking about the emotions 
and about well this delay also to highlight high quality thank you for your patience pretty pretty good actually you just need to make small modification to this email and add in your real product delay reasons and this email is actually i would say is eight out of ten in terms of email we can write to stakeholders what i like the best is the ps session see what they said in the ps if the delay will have a significant impact on your plans, please let me know and we'll be able to offer solutions or attorneys to help minimize the impact. So it's talking about the backup plan. Whenever things are delayed and there's a backup plan, how it's going to mitigate the risk. This is like a great communication style and I actually like it a lot. And that's why I put it in and say, oh my God, that's pretty good. This is, this is pretty good. Now the final part, which is 99% people miss, which is, the strategy thinking and product vision aspect. Because I believe that the unique aspect of people managers, product manager is someone who is able to understand the inside of human relationships. So I start to poke around to see if you can customize for my needs. For example, we have lots of students who need help to write product manager resumes and ask ChatGPT this question. How to write a great product manager resume so that I'm able to get more interviews? I actually didn't like the answer. It gave me a very generic answer. Like start with writing a strong summary, an objective statement, list your relevant experience, achievement. Lots of people using this generic resume style, they're not able to land interviews at all. So therefore my sense is that ChatGPT is only good to pull information together, give me a summary answer, but when you want him to be specific to your specific niche, your domain, it's not that good. So for the resume tips, I'll do two out of 10. You definitely cannot land the PM interview just by following the resume tips by ChatGPT. Then I ask a product strategy and product vision question, which would design the long-term roadmap. Because as a product manager frequently, knowing how to build a product it's okay, improve existing product, but there's so many competitions and out there, how can we be better and really create long-term strategy vision to become the number one product in the market? This is the most challenging part of being a product manager. And then I asked ChatGPT this question, create product roadmap for Google Cloud Platform, right? So this is a very long-term question, but it's not able to answer the question correctly because it said, I'm sorry, not able to create a product roadmap for Google Cloud Platform or any other specific product because as a language model, I don't have access to current information that Google plans or internal process. Additionally, create a product roadmap is complex task that requires deep understanding of the product, the market, and competitive landscape, as well as the ability to make informed prediction about the future. So in general, the AI model is mainly trained based on the past data. Anything about the future, they don't know. Uh, anything about how strategically you, you need to position your product, they don't know. I even asked a question regarding, hey, tell me more about the recession. And is the recession coming in 2023? And the response is the same regarding, it's very hard to predict the future. They only build in the past data. So my conclusion for strategy thinking is actually zero out of 10 from ChatGPT's perspective. So ChatGPT is definitely not the best but definitely good enough for us to get some results and actually really good at helping you to pass interviews. In my next video, I'm going to tell you how exactly you're able to use ChatGPT to pass any interview out there. This is amazing. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Once the video will be available, it will be put right here. What's your opinion of ChatGPT? It's going to replace management and your specific jobs. Comment in the chat. I love to continue the conversation with all of you guys. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from PMAccelerator.io. I'm going to see you soon in my next video. Bye guys.